Hello everyone, Dr. Chen here. Uh, we're going to go over chapter 3, motion in 3 dimension in this video. So this is a typical motion in 2 dimension, a long jump, not only the athlete move in the horizontal direction, so over time he moved in the y direction as well, in the vertical direction. And the job of physics class is to help us how to describe this kind of motion uh, accurately and uh, quantitatively. Okay, so in order to describe motion in two dimension, we need to build our coordinate system in two dimension as well. So in two dimension, we are going to have x and y direction in Cartesian coordinate, and we are only going to work in Cartesian coordinate. That x is always perpendicular to y. And if we look at this coordinate system, we have a zero original point, and we have x direction, right? And this is our positive x, and then we have y direction, this is our positive y, and x and y are perpendicular to each other. And we get a points in this coordinate system, for example, point P and point Q. Now, point P has x coordinate and the y coordinate, and this x and y. So let's call this one xp, call this one yp. This xp and yp works together, give us where this point is in this coordinate system. And similarly, we have point Q. Now, uh, Motion in two dimension is a point, uh, one object that changes its position from one coordinate in the coordinate system to another coordinate system. For example, a person moves from point P to point Q. So, the, this is, uh, we call this the initial position, Ri. You start from, we start from the original point, pointing to the position where the object is, P. This is Ri, the initial position. And uh, this, from vector, we know Ri plus this theta R. We call the displacement, give us final position. So initial position plus displacement give us position. In other words, displacement is defined as your final position as a vector. Subtract your initial position as a vector, which exactly give you this vector pointing from P to Q. A vector pointing from initial position to final position is exactly the displacement. Now, of course, it's a lens, right? It's a dimension is a lens. So it's SI unit for displacement is meter. Now the only difference from two dimension to one dimension is that you not only have displacement in x direction, you might also have displacement in y direction. Your delta r is a vector sum. Your delta r is a vector sum of delta x in the x direction plus your delta y in the y direction. Now, delta x in the x direction give, give us this vector. Delta y in the y direction give us this vector. So this delta x and the delta y only give us magnitude. And the direction in the x direction, of course, is either pointing to the positive x direction or negative direction. Same for y direction, right? And these two vectors, delta x as a vector, delta y as a vector, you add them together, you will get the total displacement in two dimensions. This is just how it works, which is pretty straightforward, right? Hopefully. And now we have velocity in two dimensions. Uh, now, it's also very straightforward after we defined displacement in two dimensions. So if we recall, if we recall, uh, velocity in one dimension is delta x over delta t, right? So displacement in one dimension uh, divide by the time give us velocity in one dimension. Now in two dimensions, almost the same. Displacement in two dimension divided by the time give us 
the velocity. Now this time, this time, displacement look is a vector. It has a it has a direction. So our average velocity has a direction as well, and our average velocity has a direction which is exactly the same as a displacement. Now as a vector. Let's see, this is our v average as a vector. And it can have an x component, we call it v average x pointing in the positive x direction. And then it can have a v average y, which is point, uh, no, sorry, not this one. This is our v average y pointing in the positive y direction. This is v average x. Now, the x component of the velocity, of course, is a displacement in the x direction divided by t, and average velocity in y direction is displacement in y direction divided by t. And the instantaneous velocity, which is you take the limit, where this delta t is very, very, very small. Let's see if that's all we need to know about velocity. Now we move on to uh, acceleration, uh, to acceleration in two dimensions. Uh, same as one dimension. If we can recall, acceleration in one dimension is change of velocity divided by the time interval. Now, the acceleration in two dimension is a change of velocity in two dimension, which of course is just your final velocity in two dimension, your initial velocity in two dimension divided by delta t, give you average acceleration in two dimension. And we have the same component the x component of acceleration is a change of velocity in x direction over t. y component of acceleration is change of velocity in y direction over delta t. And the acceleration, instantaneous acceleration, is a limit where we take this delta t to be very, very small. Let's do one example. So we have a person walk along this path, 30 meter, and then walk this path, 40 meter. 30 meter and 40 meter the perpendicular. So from trigonometry, we can find that the distance between A and B is 50 meter. So let's ask ourselves, what is the distance this person traveled? Uh, the tra distance traveled is 30 meter plus 40 meter equals 70 meter, right? Distance. So average speed is distance traveled, 70 meter, divided by the time it takes. For example, 20 seconds, then the average speed is 3.5 meter per second. Now, speed doesn't have a direction, no direction. And what about average velocity? It's the displacement divided by the time. Displacement is a vector pointing from initial position to final position. And the magnitude of this displacement is 50 meter. So the magnitude of average velocity is 50 meter divided by time, which is 20 seconds in this. 2.5 meter per second, this is magnitude of average velocity. And average velocity does have a direction, which is in the same direction. This is our v average. Average velocity is in the same direction as our displacement. From A to B, there's a displacement. And distance and speed, neither of them has a direction. Okay, we want to look at a very interesting demo. Uh, let's first play this video. This is a demonstration of the 
the independence of motion in the x and the y directions. What I have here is a is a cart that moves along the track and a ball with a plunger. And when I depress the plunger, then the ball is released and the and the plunger activates when this sensor passes a little uh, metallic strip right here. So if the cart isn't moving, then the ball goes straight up and down and comes right back down to where where it started. Now this is pretty obvious, right? This is pretty obvious. If uh, if the ball is not moving and the nature ball directly upward, uh, the ball is going to come back to the cart. Now I think the question I want to ask you ask uh, the question I want to ask all of us is that what's going to happen if the car nudges the ball straight up, straight up, and the cart is moving as well. While the cart is moving and the cart nudges the ball straight up. Is the ball going to get back to the cart or fall in front of the cart? Um, so, yeah. So, and it's. Uh, this is a demonstration you, of the independence of motion in the X and the Y directions. What I have here is a is a cart that moves along the track, and a ball with a plunger. And when I depress the plunger, then the ball is released and the, and the plunger activates when this sensor passes a little uh, metallic strip right here. So if the cart isn't moving, then the ball goes straight up and down and comes right back That's down to where My it started. My question is if the cart is moving. If I press moving, it again, and give it a little bit of momentum. Directly up. And what happens is the ball Did you looks like, the right? from your perspective and mine, the ball looks like it's executing a parabolic trajectory. From the point of view of the cart, though, an observer sitting in this cart, the ball will go straight up and come straight back down on top of his head. So that, that shows the independence of motion in the X and the Y directions. And um, that's it. Yeah. So now this is a very important concept in two-dimensional motion. The motion in X part and in Y part are totally independent. The X part of motion will occur exactly as if there's no motion in Y part at all, and vice versa. So we can make it even a much, stre uh, much extreme case. So for example, if I'm sitting in a car, you're sitting in a car, you hold a rifle in your hand, and you point the rifle perfectly up, and your car is moving at absolutely constant velocity and there's no air resistance. You should have blown it up. You should have blown it up. So from your perspective, perspective, if you look at the bullet, what happened to the bullet? So in the horizontal direction, the bullet has the same velocity as you. So the bullet is always above the rifle. The bullet is just the distance from the bullet to the rifle is changing. So this is a situation you you sitting in a car, you hold the rifle perfectly up and shoot it up. And then from your perspective, the, the bullet is always at exactly above the rifle. And the bullet will goes back to the rifle when it's falling back. So this is uh, just uh, how physics works. Now, of course, we made a lot of assumption here. In ideal case, the car moving perfect 
constant velocity motion and there is no air resistance. This is what's going to happen. And you have to shoot the ball perfectly up. But hopefully, hopefully this extreme case can help us understand the independence of motion in x direction and y direction. Okay, so let's try to understand the independence of motion in x direction and the y direction using this example. That t equals zero. We have a spacecraft at zero. It has a x velocity, initial velocity in x direction 22, acceleration in x direction 24, in the y direction initial velocity 14, acceleration 12. We want to find out what's the x and the vx, what's the y and the vy of the spacecraft. And then we find what's the velocity of the spacecraft. So we already said x direction and the y direction, they are independent. They are independent. So what do we know in the x direction? We know the initial velocity. We know the acceleration. We know the time. We want to find out vx and x. So we just need to use kinematic equation in x direction. vx equals v0x plus axt, plug in all the numbers, 22 plus 24 times 7 meter per second, which is 190 meter per second. And the position, which is, uh, well, should be initial position, but the initial position is zero, right? So V zero xt, initial velocity in x times t, plus one half axt squared, plug in all the numbers, Okay, we do the same thing for the y direction. What do we know in the y direction? Initial velocity, acceleration t, we want to find the final velocity. Same, initial velocity plus a y t. Give us 98 second and position in y. it into your calculator okay that's a uh, displacement in y direction now it asks what's uh, what's the uh, velocity which means we need to find this vector and the vector you need to find is the magnitude and direction okay but it's simple, because we know the x component of velocity, we know the x, we know the y. So we can find out what's the magnitude of velocity, which is simply the x squared plus the y squared from Pythagorean theorem in trigonometry. 190 squared plus 98 squared meter per second to 10 meter per second. And this angle is inverse tangent. Y component divided by X component, which gives us 27 degree. So to conclude, to conclude how we're dealing with motion in two dimensions, you just need to figure out all the kinematic variable in X direction and do X direction variables just as if it is one dimensional motion and do the same for Y direction. X, the motion in X direction and the motion in Y direction, they are totally independent. Okay, with that in mind, we can go and study a special case of two dimensional motion, which is projectile motion. So what is a projectile motion? Projectile motion uh, move with only with with and only with gravity acting under 
object. So gravity is acting on the object flying in the air, and there is only one force acting on the object, which is gravity. And we know in the vertical direction, gravity will give this object uh, acceleration, which is acceleration that you're going to check in your lab three. And this acceleration is pointing in the negative y direction, always. And what about the x direction? Is there any force in x direction for this object doing projectile motion by definition? No, there's no force in x direction. So in the x direction, the velocity is a constant, always. So there's only one kinematic variable we're going to use in the x direction because it's doing constant velocity motion. So displacement equals velocity times t. That's the only equation we need to use in the x direction. And in the y direction is basically a free fall. So you, we use the technique we learned from free fall motion to study uh, pr the y component of projectile motion. And if we have an initial velocity, which is in either pointing in x or y, it has an angle, then the x component of the initial velocity is initial velocity cotangent c zero from trigonometry. Y component, y component is v zero sine theta. X component is v zero cotangent theta. So to summarize, for projectile motion, the velocity in the x direction is a constant, and it always equals to v zero cotangent theta all the time. There's only one kinematic equation we need to use. Uh, this is Vx. This is our V0x, right? So the kinematic equation to use in the x direction is V0x times t, and V0x equals V0 cosine theta. Now in the y direction, we need to use the equation for constant acceleration motion, and the acceleration is negative 9.8. So the velocity in y is your initial velocity in y direction, subtract gt, now of course this is plus at, and then your a is negative g for, for free fall and the projectile motion. And displacement initial velocity in y times t plus one half at square, and a is negative g, so it's negative one half gt square. And the same, we have the third kinematic equation. So the velocity in x direction is constant for projectile motion. The acceleration is negative g in the y direction. And we need to use kinematic equation for free fall to solve the y component. And it is position and velocity is we need to add x component and the y component together as vectors. So how do we solve the problem? Usually it's best that we sketch the path of the projectile and we find the v0x, v0y is v0 cosine theta 0, v0 sine theta 0, right? v0 x is v0 cosine theta 0 and uh, we need to use kinematic equation in horizontal direction and kinematic equation in vertical direction to solve the variables but in the x direction we only have one kinematic equation because in the horizontal direction is a constant velocity motion in the vertical direction remember it's a free fall so use kinematic equation for free fall motion so let's do one simple example in projectile motion. So if you just uh, launch something with uh, initial velocity and then go, how far does it go? So basically you launch it here from initial velocity, let's call it a theta with initial velocity zero. And then we want to find this distance, range r. So from initial position to final position, what do we know? 
what do we do know? We always know the acceleration in y direction is negative g. And we know initial velocity in y direction, right? Initial velocity in y direction v zero y is v zero sine theta. And what else do we know from this point that goes back to this point? What is displacement in y direction? It started from the ground and up in the ground, so displacement in y direction is zero. So we, we know three variables. We find out these three variables. We need to find out the time first in y direction. How long this object is flying in the air? So we need to solve t. We need to solve t from the three variable we know in y direction. So the kinematic equation we use is this one. Displacement equals initial velocity in y times t minus one half g d square, and we solve it. We'll find out. Uh, this one looks like a quadratic equation, but it's not because uh, you can cancel t. So this is zero, so you can cancel t. So we find the t is two v zero sine theta divided by g. This is our t. And then we find out the t, and then we also know v zero x is v zero cosine theta. And so what is the displacement in x direction? We have emphasized a lot of times there is only one kinematic equation you're going to use in the x direction, which is v zero x times t, and v zero x is v zero cosine theta times t, which is q v zero sine theta over g. And now there is an identity in trigonometry. You may or may not learn that. But you can check it uh, on, on your math textbook. 2 times sine theta cosine theta equals sine 2 theta. So we just uh, combine 2 sine theta cosine theta to sine 2 theta. We combine v0 to square sine 2 theta over g. So this is the range. So this is how we get this range equation if we launch a projectile with the initial velocity v0 and with the angle theta. Now using this one we can find something that already interesting that if you launch it with 15 degrees it would be the range would be exactly equals to if you launch it 75 degrees. So sine 2 times 15 degrees equals sine 2 times 75 degree. If you go back, you see, if you fix the initial speed, if you fix the initial speed, the range only depends on your angle now and only depends on sine 2 theta. And, well, this is generally true that 2 times theta equals sine 2 90 degree subtract with theta. So this is why we see this kind of coincidence. Now of course, uh, 45 degree is uh, 90 degree subtract 45 degree equals 45 degree. Okay, now I ask you a question. What would be the angle that you can launch this projectile? The farthest if your initial speed is fixed. You fix your speed. To fix your speed, V0 is fixed. Which angle give you our max, maximal range? Okay, uh, try to think about that. Uh, and if you can figure it out, you can write an email, let me know. And if you cannot, also write an email and ask me what's the best angle. What's the optimal angle for project? For the projectile range. Okay, now let's look at this one. So, if there is a mechanism, we can release those two objects from the same height. 
Uh, so in the y direction, their motion are exactly the same, right? They're going to drop to the same position in y direction. Uh, it's just that the x direction of this target is not going to change. The x direction of this bullet is going to move at a constant velocity, but eventually they're going to bump into each other because the position, the y position of those two objects are always the same. If this time we have a gun, we point it directly on the target, we shoot it, and it will always get to the target, right? So I also want to challenge us. Now what's going to happen if I point in my gun this way and this object is directly pointing to the target? Would this bullet get to this target? This is also a famous shoot the monkey um, experiment that a hunter is pointing a gun to a monkey. Now suppose the velocity of the bullet is not very fast and the monkey was scared after here the gunshot released the hand from the tree. So the monkey start free fall at the instant the bullet was shot. How should the hunter pointing his gun to make sure that the bullet always get the monkey? Uh, point up above the monkey or pointing directly on the monkey or pointing below the monkey. Okay, try to think about that. You can pause this video, try to think about for maybe five to 10 minutes if you want. Come up with your best answer and then watch this video and see whether your answer agrees with the experiment. So we have a gun, and the gun has a laser point. So make sure that we have the gun pointing to the well-protected monkey, which is Curious George. And the monkey, there's a mechanism that the monkey There's a mechanism that the monkey will exactly release at the instance the bullet was fired. And it's directly pointing to the monkey. Are we going to get the monkey? Looks like we did, right? And this time the velocity of the ball is 30 meters per second. Now we can change the initial velocity of the bullet. We can change the initial velocity of the bullet, make it moving slower, see whether it's the same. We change the speed to 9 meters per second. So we still got the monkey. answer this question that I asked before this video correctly? Uh, is this uh, experiment amazed you? Okay, so I'm going to recall a separate video. Uh, I think I'm just going to call it a shoot the monkey video to rigorously prove that if you're pointing your gun directly to the monkey, you are always going to get the monkey. And you are welcome to send me an email to discuss this experiment with me if uh, you find that it's interesting. Now the next topic in chapter three is relative velocity, which is 
to me, I think it's pretty straightforward, right? So we have a reference, we have a reference coordinate system, let's call it E. This E is not moving, but A is moving and B is moving. A is moving as a position related to E is R A E, and B as a position related to E as R B E. So what's the position between R A and B? A and B. So it's just uh, R A E subtract R B E, right? R A E subtract R B E. We can also write it as R A E. Oh, not here. Not here. Uh, we can also write it as if you want R A E equals R B E plus R B -E A. Yeah, you have the same for you have same for velocity. V A B is V A E subtract VBE because velocity is just uh, velocity is just RAB divided by theta T and if R and theta T are all the same the velocity satisfy the same equation so I will trust you to learn this and work out the homework problems on this topic that are related to motion. So here we just need to be very careful, label the object and write down the velocity related to them and then have the equation and solve any variable that is unknown. So to summarize, we have defined displacement velocity and acceleration in two dimensions and then we know that motion in x and the y directions are independent so you have you can use the kinematic equation separating in x direction and the y direction as known as you know the variables in x direction and y direction and then we have projectile motion projectile motion so it's a constant velocity motion in x direction and the free fall in y direction and that's the kinematic equations we need to use in for projectile motion and then we have the simple topic related velocity so I'm going to make a video with examples in projectile motion and upload it soon see you later thank you for your attention